What we've got here is... The I Just Saw podcast, your favorite raw, uncut, uncensored, spoiler-filled review of films, television, whatever the hell I want to do, story times, etc., etc. I am your host, Matthew Danzek, a.k.a. the artist formerly known as Brando, Matthew Brando. Uh, quickly, if you don't, you're subscribed to me on YouTube and you don't know why you were subscribed to a Matthew Brando, now you're su- subscribed to a Matthew Danzek and you haven't been a part of my live streams or anything or people have talked about it or if I've answered the question. I used to have the stage name Brando about 2013 it started. I really liked Mar- Marlon Brando, him fighting against injustice and stuff. He was essentially woke before woke was a thing. And I have, you know, a lot of black friends, a lot of Hispanic friends. Uh, I have gay family members. Uh, I have gay friends. I have all kinds of religious friends. I have Muslim friends. Even though I personally am Catholic, um, I wanted them to live, you know, a good life. And I wanted them to still be in my life. And so I wanted to kind of like, you know, fight for them in a way. But in 2018, 19 um i just kind of have an epiphany like i am the most real dude probably i know everything about my life is authentic and genuine why, why would you have a fake name if you live like a, a genuine authentic life so i kind of just dropped it and uh now i'm using my my real name so that's if you ever <laughs> wondered why that was like that you know that's why it's like that so um yeah so spoiler filled and all that shit i already said that um so you're gonna get real opinions being uncut and uncensored um, you're going to get the real opinions with the spoilers. So if you haven't seen Alien Romulus yet, please stop this, go see it, and then come back to this. So we can have like a little discussion here. I actually just got back from Regal Cinemas, and I actually was not seeing the movie at Regal Cinemas. I was shopping, and I was looking for the Regal uh, cup, the canister with the face hugger on it. I guess it's $35. I go into the closest Regal, like 15 minutes away. And I talked to the guy. It looks like he wanted to kill himself. <laughs> the worker there. And uh, I asked him, you know, do you have the canister? And he goes, yeah, I think so. I was like, how much are they? Oh, $35. I was like, okay, cool. I'll get one. <laughs> so he goes to the one corner, comes around the other way, doesn't find it. And then the manager's running around like a jackass. It's like, there's no, nobody here. I don't know why he's like running around with the chicken with the head cough. But he you know, goes to the manager. All I had was like the smaller chalices or cups. And he goes, all we have is this cup. And I was like, all right, well, there's one on display. And I was like, can I just buy this display one? He's like, oh, we can't do that. And I was like, <sighs> under my breath as I left, I was like, that's horrible customer service. If I go to another Regal, it's another 15 minutes away. And uh, the really great manager there said that they're all sold out. And um, they didn't have any. He even checked again for me, which is really nice. But they didn't have it. I was like, dude, I've been to two Regals. I'm not going fucking all over the place for this damn canister and they're freaking on sale for like a hundred on sale they're scalped for 100 130 bucks on ebay and macari and shit just like dude and i saw this reddit story that somebody spent five thousand dollars one guy spent five grand at a regal and bought everything to resell it as i touched the microphone <laughs> and uh they i guess the regal called up another regal and said hey this guy's probably gonna come in don't sell it to him so that's good because the real fans like myself want to buy it because I went to see the film at AMC last night. I had a bunch of friends they're they going to see it. And I was like, dude, I'm a huge Alien fan. I, I got to fucking see it fucking opening night. And I know the Internet's going to ruin shit, which I'm really glad I saw it because a little bit of ruining by the Internet people, mostly Twitter. Um, but yeah, my friend Ronnie saw it. Saw my buddy Jimmy Champagne saw it. Um, a couple of our friends, Albert, Baptiste. A lot of people are going to see this movie, and I'm hoping that this movie tracks really well. It's, I guess, an $80 million budget or so, and it's already made $75 million, or it's about to track for this weekend for $75 million, which is really good. So that's good news. But uh, AMC. So yeah, the fan event was essentially a lot of money. It was like fucking $22, $23 a ticket. So it's like $50 to go see this movie, but it was well worth it. It was awesome. But the AMC fan event had a patch and it had a, a pin. It was like a, almost like a IMAX looking poster. It's about like an inch and a half. Um, the wife really wanted it. She loves free stuff. You know, you can pay a little bit, <laughs> a bit more for the uh, um, the free stuff. But uh, it's cool to like just collect it and have it. And the patch is really cool. It's like a Wayland Utani like a white logo on a black. It looks almost like a sticker, but uh, it's a patch. And that's probably the cooler thing than the pin. The pin's pretty cool, though. It looks like the Prometheus IMAX poster styling. It's got like the big white border. But um, I went in the movie 
just like I did with Covenant and the Batman, I did not see a trailer. I didn't want to know shit about it. And I'm really glad because I loved Alien Covenant and I loved the Batman and I love Alien Romulus. And in the Batman's first trailer, it actually ruins like the first scene. It ruins like the fucking movie, like a small little twist in the movie. So it's insane like how many uh, trailers give away like a lot of like surprises nowadays. And I haven't gone to see a movie in the theater for like almost a year. I don't know, maybe six months. Out of the past two years, I've seen three movies, I believe. I've seen John Wick 4, Godzilla Minus One, and then this one. And I wasn't going to see Godzilla Minus One until a buddy's like, no, you got to see it. I'm taking you tomorrow. I was like, oh, okay. So I haven't been to the movies much since like COVID. Uh, I used to have the Regal Unlimited Pass. I used to go every Tuesday with my buddy Dan back home. But, uh, you know, I've moved. I don't have the disposable income really anymore. I don't really have the Regal Unlimited. Maybe I start getting that again. But uh, I might go see this movie again on Saturday. But I saw it on Thursday nights. Got the patches. Story-wise, uh, I did know that the kids were the main characters. So in that case, my mind was racing. It was like, uh, is this going to be like a school trip? And then they uh, get trapped in those xenomorph all of a sudden comes out and kills them, blah, 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 and picks them off by one by one. So my mind was racing in a bunch of different directions. I'm really glad they didn't go that direction because I thought, well, if they do that, that's kind of just like a one-off. That doesn't really add anything to the lore, the discourse, uh, the universe of Alien. So I'm really glad that they didn't do that. <laughs> and they really went in the direction that they did. The whole first act, man, I was grinning the whole time. It, I, I have not seen a fully functioning society or colonization or colony uh, in an alien film yet. And I've been wanting to see that so much. And it was in the back of my mind as the third act approached, I was like, oh my gosh, are they going to go back here? And it's going to be like, you know, Lost World Jurassic Park. Didn't happen, but I'm not that disappointed because hopefully it happens in a sequel. Um, if I think the director's name is Fetty. If Fetty's listening or really Scott's listening, I laid out it. I would love to see that in a sequel uh, as a very loud motorcycle goes by. Okay, so I'm going to say something. I don't know if that picked up on the microphone. Do not buy a property or rent a property that was built in like the 2010s to 2020s. They are the cheapest construction. It is garbage, the paper thin walls, and they put them up fast because they don't give a shit and they're just going to make money off you and move on to the next thing. So buy something from like the 80s or prior. <laughs> So hopefully you don't have any more fucking motorcycles. It pisses me off. Okay. So uh, yeah, it was just fucking awesome seeing the colony. I'd never seen that in an alien film. And I, I, I was just absolutely elated. I was like, this is already the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so the movie was absolutely perfect with an asterisk. Um, from the beginning, I was in love with the characters. Their backstories were, were incredible. The, the, the asshole guy, when I was watching the, the dickhead kid in the beginning, I was like, this guy's kind of a little bit of a trope. He's just being a dick and he's going to die for sure. But then they gave him a backstory why he was a dick. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. You're still going to die though. But uh, it was cool like seeing so many different characters with so many different like motivations for the most part. Um, the main character was awesome. I believe her name was Rain. That's a little bit of an issue I guess I have. I don't really remember much of the characters, um, but I definitely want to see this movie again. I want to try to see an IMAX. The film uh, for the fan event was in like a Dolby cinema, very big screen, and the Dolby, it was Atmos, I believe. Unbelievable setup. Sound design, absolutely incredible. I heard every metal scrape. I felt it. Every single, there was like some air conditioning in like the spaceship. Like I thought that was actually a part of the movie theater, not the movie. And as the scene cut into a different scene, that that part like stopped in that one like 28th speaker or whatever it was. Like unbelievable presentation and experience. Great sound design. Whoever did that editing, wonderful job. But uh, the characters, um, probably the best written crew since Aliens. I absolutely love what I thought was presumably like a on the spectrum brother. I believe his name was what, Andy? Let me look that up real quick. Uh, Alien Romulus. Also, I refuse for the most part to go to Letterbox. I use IMDb. His name was Andy. Yeah, David Johans. Is it, dude, that guy is Swedish? Let me look this up. Got a Swedish last name. Is he American or is he from Sweden? Oh, that was his middle name. Johan, jo Johnson, Johnson, David Johnson. He's from Britain. Dude, real quickly, dude. You were unbelievable. That has to be some of the best acting I've seen in a really long time. Unreal, David. How old are you, dude? Let me look this up. Does it say? It just says he's five foot nine. Unreal, bro. 
what a fantastic job you did, man. I love the fact that I thought he was just like on the spectrum, but it actually was, was revealed that he's a synthetic. But whoever casts, you know, the synthetics in these films, from the first Alien to uh, Fassbender as David and Walter to Andy, absolute brilliant work on the casting. I also love the fact that like in the neck, you can change out like a chip and it can like kind of move around and he has to reboot. Like that was such a nicely introduced element. There's so many cool elements. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But uh, you have this like the first like dream with Rain. I actually thought it was going to go in like a different direction. I'm glad they didn't do that. I thought it was going to go like a maybe telepathic direction, which they never gone before. I'm really glad they did not. Um, we did see dreams in Aliens and Prometheus, but pre- predating this shot, the opening sequence with the ship, brilliant. We got people in the theater. They're they're clapping. Uh, they're, one person said, uh, game over, man, game over. And he he held up, one or someone else held up their regal, uh, the, the canister, the light up cup. And I was like, oh man, that looks cool. I kind of want that. So uh, that's probably where that came from. But I really wanted to uh, yell, hey Vasquez, you've been mistaken for a man. I was going to wait for like the whole crowd. Like, no, are you? Is that the right line? No, have you? I think it's the line. But uh, anyway, continuing on. Uh, yeah, so it was like dead silent in the theater. And then, you know, the opening, you got the opening credits. Speaking of the opening credits, David Fincher-esque, Alien 3 inspired, let me say, further proving David Fincher's genius. But um, the movies, uh, you got the Scott Free logo, and then all of a sudden it's just like, and it's like the ship, and it's like super dark, which is fucking awesome, um, and super silent. And then you go into the, the top of the ship, and let me tell you, I've never heard a quieter theater. Literally never heard a quieter theater. It was unbelievable. And uh, my wife, like, like grabbed my fucking arm <laughs> and was like, dude, there's not going to fucking be an alien coming out right now. They're just adding into, like, the atmosphere. It's what they do. It's, like, unbelievable tension and atmosphere created in these films, especially the first one started it all. Uh, really, Scott, absolute genius. Um, it, I don't think anyone does it better. I don't think anyone does it better. Anyway, uh, so speaking of uh, other alien films, like Alien 3, the beginning, you know, was alien like the colony, aliens like. They kind of went into its own, like the film itself, like the the plot, the style is kind of like alien aliens hybrid, and that's why I guess in a way that it was sandwiched in between alien and aliens timeline wise. Um, it had wonderful elements of Prometheus, like I literally like did like a very quiet clap when um, Rook was like talking about the Prometheus project and shit. I was like, ah, yeah, the black goo. I'm really glad they acknowledged that and put that um, in the film, in the universe still. But uh, unfortunately for me, um, the ending of like the hybrid Prometheus engineer, I don't know, it's like, it was like a hybrid of Prometheus and Resurrection. Like, unfortunately, there was a lot of alien universe elements and one of them being Resurrection, which I fucking hate that movie. It's a really good okay movie until the hybrid it just fucking just dips like it's like it's actually a decent ride it's fun um it's got you know decent action and it's got some some cool ideas but then it continues like the the whole th- uh, tread the whole theme of the company wanting the alien but they did it so much better in romulus uh so i feel like in a way romulus is kind of like a reboot in a way but it also mixes in the other uh these other elements but also i guess real quickly aliens vs predator was included too with the, the tail pulling up the one human, and you know that happened in you know AVP with the predator. Uh, the alien picks up the predator, but man, that that fucking ending. Anyway, we'll get to that later. Uh, get away from here, you bitch! And other callbacks were actually awesome. I saw some people bitching about that on Twitter. God, people are just fucking miserable. Uh, I loved it. People in the theater loved it. They clapped. It was fun. It wasn't corny or forced. I feel like that happens a lot. It's kind of in the Terminator uh, sequels and reboots. It's just like mm, it happens a lot in films like. Suicide Squad, uh, not the James Gunn one, the one that was butchered. Uh, so yeah, I love that in the first act also, that the company was just a huge piece of shit. Uh, the main girl, Rain, wanted to go off world to visit a place of bliss as like a vacation. Maybe she just wanted to fucking leave. That's probably why they declined her. But she did the work. She should have got the time off. And only for the company to like secretly double her you know goal hours and it's going to take another five to six years to achieve her goals. So it presumably took at least five years to achieve what she was doing now. You know, she looked rather young and it just doubled thanks to that asshole lady. And I was like, damn, that's some real shit. So they did a great job with the writing to make you like sympathetic, empathetic to characters. 
the directing was fucking awesome. The kids going up into space and entering the atmosphere. I'm really uh, glad that they let that scene breathe and like just held on to them. I felt like maybe Ridley Scott would have just like cut away to the exterior of the ship and then just kind of ends. But um, I really liked being trapped in there with them and feeling like the anxiety there or fear that they were experiencing. Ash, Rook, uh, the CGI, it was not great. Not horrible, but not good. Uh, it's a little bit of a minor issue, but I don't take points off for it or anything. Um, I believe Ian, the original actor, I believe he's he's dead. I think he died in 2020. So like you can't use him and then de-age him like you can with like say Robert Downey Jr. and Civil War or whatever. They de-aged him in and, and all that shit. But it's so much easier to take like an actor and de-age them um, than to take someone's fucking face and then put on a different actor like they did in Tron Legacy. And that's why it kind of looks weird. But at the same time, Clue is a fucking computer program, so he can look weird. But uh, yeah, if it wasn't on a TV screen, uh, Ash looked a little odd. But actually, when I thought uh, we saw Ash on the floor originally with a costume, I thought it was actually was him because the costuming looked the same uniform as Ash. And I was like, is that Ash? I was like, no, I don't think so. I mean, it could be. And it ended up being it. So I was like, a nice little surprise. And once again, I saw somebody bitching about that on Twitter or something. I'm like, oh, it's fucking Jay. Was Jay Bauman from uh, Red Letter Media? Yeah, fucking ridiculous. People just can't be happy anymore, man. It's crazy. But um, speaking of Ash, uh, I thought it was interesting that he was helping uh, the kids out at the beginning and then turned. And you have that, like, will he or will, won't he with Andy. So there's always fucking trust issues thanks to that first movie with uh, synthetics. So it's actually really cool that in Aliens, Bishop was cool. And then in Alien 3, he was cool. And then in Resurrection, fucking main characters are synthetic, whatever. But I love that Andy was good, that a little bit evil and good. And then like the chip, uh, the chip set changes that. Like this character was like really gray. It wasn't just like a black and white. This person's good. This, this person's bad. It just felt real. I, I love that. I thought it was great, wonderful writing. And I feel like um, we need more movies like that. It's something that William Freak can always uh, preached. Um, around this time, what is this note? Oh, um, it says around this time, around the time, fucking moron, I can't even write notes. Around the time they were searching for uh, fuel. I was actually thinking like, this is kind of like alien isolation because I play a lot of video games. I you know, consume all kinds of media, games, movies, uh, TV, music. Uh, and I felt like I was kind of like watching like an alien isolation spiritual successor. It kind of felt like a video game. And then um, I thought really quickly, I know Co uh, Covenant broke even, uh, even though it was considered a failure by the studio that didn't make like a shit ton of money. Like some of the fans didn't like it. Some of the critics didn't like it. So uh, that was literally the time when Disney bought out Fox. So like the whole thing was like kind of in uh, disarray a little bit and people were like, oh, is Deadpool going to be rated R? Or is Disney going to make it PG-13? Um, really glad Disney let Fox and the people at Fox do their own thing with those franchises. Um, but once again, people love to hate shit just because they think it's the cool thing to do. And now, you know, you fucking see all these people on the internet, Twitter and all that shit. They're like, oh, yeah, Prometheus is really good. Oh, Alien Covenant is really good. Like, no shit, motherfucker. Like, anyway, I feel like with this new film, we're getting it because Alien Isolation did really well. Even though I think Isolation predates Covenant, but the fucking people love Isolation so much. But I think Fede, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing her name, but um, I think I actually read that uh, Alien Isolation was a big uh, reason why he made this movie or, or a big inspiration. And I, I felt that. I felt like when the kids were looking for the fuel, that it was kind of like a game where they were like doing different objectives. Because sometimes games, just real quick rant, I really can't play games in a way that I used to anymore. Now I kind of just play them as like, if I want to shoot somebody online in Call of Duty or Fortnite, or if I want to like shoot a puck in NHL or throw a football in Madden or college football 25. Um, I usually just do that or play online with friends, talk to them. That Honestly, it's like the biggest like social thing for me. I just talk to them on Xbox live chat. Um, I really can't play like a Fallout 4. I get bored. So like when it comes to campaigns, I can only do like a fucking franchise I absolutely love like Alien or 
I could try out like a Fallout, like 76, I could do that, but it gets annoying after a little bit. Um, just doing like a bunch of fucking repetitive tasks are really boring. It has to be some kind of like story or something I really love there. Like I tried to do the Star Wars Jedi Survivor or the other Fallen Order or something. I forget the other title, the one that was uh, a couple years ago, not the one that was this year or last year. I just couldn't do it. It felt like fucking Mario. Like I, I didn't really want to like do all this jumping and shit. I was just like, this is boring to me. So... I did feel that the, the movie was kind of like a, the game or, you know, task mission wise in a little bit. And it's really great also that uh, Alien Isolation was fucking awesome and it didn't suck like Colonial Marines or it wasn't like mid like Fireteam Elite or whatever the game was called, uh, which was, you know, it's fun, but like I wouldn't pay $60 for it. But uh, yeah, I felt like it was more Romulus was more like a successor to kind of Isolation rather than like a successor to like Alien Aliens. But obviously it was, but I loved it anyway. So, uh, you know, the whole time I'm watching this movie, especially in the first act, I thought, man, dude, what a time to be alive. Like, wow, this is like a dream watching this movie. It literally felt like something on my dreams. Like I look at fan art all the time of like Alien, other franchises like Jurassic Park. This film's art direction was amazing. Absolutely incredible production. And I, I just saw also uh, yesterday, last night, and I totally remember it too, that this film was originally going to be released on Hulu. Thank you, God, it wasn't. Holy shit. I cannot picture that fucking sound design, like Atmos sound of like 28 or whatever speakers they got at home on a fucking, t like a 55 inch TV with fucking speakers in the TV, <laughs> or even like a fucking sound bar that says it's a Dolby Atmos. Dude, it's, it's, fu it's fucking not, it's, it's Dolby Atmos in, in a sound bar. Like if you want the experience, you have to go to theater. I'm gonna try to go for IMAX. I'm gonna try to go IMAX Saturday, okay, tomorrow. I don't know when this is gonna be released, but IMAX apparently has open mat, uh, or at least a little bit more open than, I think it's a 235 film. So it'll be a little bit bigger. But uh, I loved some of the new elements we saw, adding to the discourse and the lore of Alien. Uh, I mean, it's obviously could have been in a book or a comic, but I don't really like, consume all of that media. I just essentially watched the films. And I think there's a TV show coming out as well. Uh, but we saw, you know, the xenomorph hatch from the vagina cocoon uh, from adolescence to adulthood. Never saw that before. Uh, we never knew really how like face huggers hunt or potentially the xenomorphs hunt. So it's cool that they add in like information that uh andy downloaded you know heat signatures sweat goosebumps noise so that was fucking sick and i thought that maybe they would have done that a little bit more element wise lore wise when the xenomorphs were going to be uh, hunting them later but they did which is fine maybe in the future but we saw more of the pulse rifles i think that's what they're called Come on, nerd. How can you not know what the fucking rifles are called? I love how they had like automatic locks and they could track them. I don't remember that being in Aliens. So that was fucking cool. Uh, you know, the zero gravity action scenes. That was amazing. Like, wow. Who wrote that in? Fucking genius. So many cool new elements. Um, and I love the fact that they added in new stuff that wasn't awful. Because you look at the fucking Star Wars. I love the new trilogy. I think it's great for, you know, kids getting into Star Wars. It's a perfect no. But I love Force Awakens. I, I'm starting to love Last Jedi more. Not a big fan of Rise of Skywalker, but still um, enjoyable. But sometimes you introduce new things in TV and movies and other uh, works of art that already have established universes, films and stuff before that. Doesn't matter if it's action, characters, plot. Sometimes people just like, oh, I don't like this. It's it, it, With Star Wars, it was like, for Force Awakens, it was too much like New Hope. I hate this. Why can't they do something different? So they do something different for Last Jedi. And people are like, oh, this is too different. I don't like this. Like, what the fuck do you want them to do? <laughs> it's fucking insane. Oh, I got a text message. What did my buddy Baptiste think of the movie? Oh, they sold out of the fucking canisters. Ah, oh, man. This is just going to be a, a little subplot of the podcast. I'll text him later. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fucking hilarious that people are just never satisfied. So, um, I love the fact that they added in all these, these new elements and for the most part, everyone loved it and I loved it. 
And I thought it was just fucking just great ride. I'm so glad that they took their time on this. And I also remembered about like halfway through or two thirds through the movie that Jim Cameron said that he's going to try to make another Terminator film. Like he's going to make it like, thank you, God, even though Terminator 2 ends in a way, if you want to stop the cinema, uh, cinema universe of Terminator, Terminator 2 ends it with a really great way. But I feel like Jim Cameron, if you can make a movie just like Romulus somehow, and I think you can. Because you're incredible and a great writer. Totally do it. It's got to be as good as Romulus. Okay, so we're going to talk about the ending um, or the third act. Uh, I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it. And it did put a sour taste in my mouth a little bit. I was expecting when Isabel, by the way, a uh, fun, funny fact or fun story. Isabel, is it Merst or Mercer? Merst? Or she changed her name from, from uh, oh, what the hell's Pat's last name? Her dad's name is Patrick, and I played hockey with him. Uh, Monair. 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 And uh, he's, I think he's a firefighter. Anyway, uh, I played hockey with him back in Coleman, Cleveland. That's where she's pretty much from. Um, she would, I think, rotate cities. But anyway, um, he was telling me about how you know, she was doing Transformers and he would go on set and then like him and the writer laughed at a joke they were, they were saying and then they ruined a shot. Michael Bay yelled at him, all this crazy shit. That was really cool talking to him for like a day. <laughs> but um, I was telling him like I have film analysis shit and all this and I sent him the link. And anyway, so I kind of like know her dad, but she did, she did a really great job. Everyone did a great job acting. So she, at the end, she's pregnant and she births and I was like, okay, in my mind, I was thinking, she did the black goo. She's about to like burst something. I was like, is, is she going to burst like a xenomorph? And the fucking xenomorph's going to pop out and the baby's going to be there. Like a fetus is like, it's going to be gross. Because I kept on hearing about how, oh, this movie's so disgusting. Blah, blah. And I was like, um, I was waiting for like something super fucking gross. I haven't seen an alien film yet. And I, you know, fucking Covenant and Prometheus was way more gross than this one and thank you god because i'm not really into like the gore and the gross shit i'd rather just watch a, a story in a horror element or atmosphere like i don't need to be grossed out for it to be horror that's why i stay away from like the terrifier movies i think those are fucking stupid if you like them great that's why i kind of stopped watching the saw films like my one buddy alex hey alex i don't think you're watching hey alex that's a woman freaking voice alex gave me a copy of saw 10 and uh, I downloaded it on my computer with you know iTunes or whatever. Not my computer, but it's in my iTunes cloud on my account. I still get to watch it because I don't want to fucking watch like, a bunch of torture porn. Like I don't want to watch that anymore. But um, I love the story of Saw and the Saw universe, so I might watch it. But anyway, I'm not really into that anymore. So I don't really give a shit about like, you know, gross out elements. Like there's no need to like, I need to outgross this movie, the previous one, blah, blah, blah. I think that's fucking dumb. But anyway, I was expecting something like super gross, like... Uh, Isabel's character. What is her character's name? Let me look. Isabel uh, K. Her name is K. Yeah, I don't remember. But um, I was expecting like a fucking fetus getting killed by a Zemo or something. I don't know. But uh, she births a fucking like engineer. I thought it was going to be a deacon or something close to like a deacon. But it was a fucking engineer. And I was like, hmm. Now, I know that like almost every alien film has like a double ending, right? It's kind of like a staple of the franchise. But man, I was super satisfied with the ending being uh, Kay has the black gooner body and then they go back to the colony or they go to this new planet. Kind of like a covenant in a way ending. By the way, I hope they, I don't know how, somehow can finish up that story. Maybe they can infuse that with, with this, which they've already done. We'll see. Maybe they go to this new planet and David's there. Huh? Um, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I'm not going to lie. I love Prometheus and Covenant. Please revisit the movies. They're pretty fucking awesome. But um, the engineer uh, being birthed it just gave me resurrection flashbacks. And I fucking hate it. I hated it so much. And I was like, dude, you just ruined the perfect movie. <laughs> also, like logically, it, it begs a question. If she birthed an engineer and, and in the, the alien universe, as I touched the microphone, in the alien universe, the engineers created us, right? So far, lore wise with the black goo and themselves like logically like that circle like doesn't make sense like i might have to rewatch the films and i might be getting this wrong but like i don't know what they're going for there obviously this isn't the same exact engineer species that she birthed but 
I thought that also alternate wise, and, and if you watch the Alien Covenant deleted material, uh, David alludes to an alien queen that he wants to make. So maybe I thought K with the black goo would birth the first queen alien or have an alien egg somehow. That would have been pretty fucking sick. Not as sick as that motorcycle. Wow. Uh, and I thought that was where they're going to go for like the next film. Because I did hear a little rumblings about the ending being not controversial, but um, different, I guess. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what that really means. But now that I've seen the movie, I'm just like, mm, okay. But usually like almost all the alien films, they're a little bit drab, but they're also hopeful at the end. So continue the theme, I suppose. The music, it was it was okay. I would call it good. I wouldn't call it amazing. It was good in the movie. The whole point of f- uh, music for films, a soundtrack, a score, it's supposed to supplement the film. It's supposed to add more to the story. And I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was as great as like Prometheus or Covenant or even like The Dark Knight Rises. Like I, the, 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 them shits I listen to like all the time. Uh, I'll listen to, you know, in the horror mood or alien mood. Like I've been listening to the Covenant soundtracks of the Romulus soundtrack, you know, walking around the house, <laughs> doing chores, doing laundry, vacuuming, because it's just like, I I, I love it. I think it's wonderful. Uh, and I think it's more, more not iconic, but um, unique and iconic maybe. But I am in the baby stages of loving Romulus. So maybe the engineer birthing and third act is better for me. Maybe in time maybe i come to love the romulus soundtrack more um i guess this is just randomly in my brain for the third act i don't for the third act alien covenant's third act like the you know final double ending it was it was okay it was good same with prometheus it was okay good um it was rather short i think or covenants was better in a, in a little way when it comes to romulus it was better than both of those even though it was a fucking engineer. It was longer, it was more action. I feel like that is the big killer. Um, but the best one, obviously, is Aliens. It was, you know, the Queen final battle. That was awesome. Because you think that the Queen is stuck on the planet, but the Queen was actually, you know, hitched to the ship. And an alien, that's a big surprise. You're like, whoa, what the fuck? And I think even Ridley said that that's never was done before in a film. I'm not sure, I might be wrong. But uh, Aliens, hands down, has the best, like, double ending. Uh, Alien 3's really wasn't much. Um, It's just that the alien's in the fucking molten pit or whatever, and it comes out again, and then the uh, company's there, and then Ripley sacrifices herself. But, yeah, the the double ending was okay. It just says the fucking engineer. eh. But, um, yeah, so hopefully... (laughs) The Romulus soundtrack, I start to love that more. But it's not like I'm docking points because the soundtrack was like good. You know, makes no sense. But um, one thing I didn't expect, I didn't really fully love it. Um, and a lot of people are in the boat with me with this. Um, multiple xenomorphs. I want to know how they survived so long without food. Because, you know, there wasn't like much humans left. And there were like seven, eight, maybe ten. 10 Xenos, I think like one would have been fine. One would have been cool. Uh, I'm not docking off points for that once again, but I was just logically thinking like, why, how did they get there so long without food? Because right, they that's how they, they hunt and kill. Like, I don't know what else they do. But, um, also the extra uh, machine, really cool element being introduced. I actually thought that was going to be used a little bit more uh, than a couple seconds because um, the one pilot, the chick, the ball chick, she, uh, she like uses it to like see herself, but like it, it cuts away so quickly. I'm like, well, we can barely see the xenomorph moving inside. That been like kind of a cool thing, but uh, yeah, it was only a few seconds. You barely saw it, but I guess it's okay. I'm not, no, I don't care. I'm not talking about docking points off for it. But um, I feel like fans, for the most part, eighty percent probably love this film. Critics, it's at like eighty high eighties, like ninety percent love it. Um, I'm hoping it makes a lot of money. Um, I don't think it's gonna make like five hundred million dollars, but it might make like three hundred. I, I think it can make three hundred bucks, three hundred million dollars. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if I'm right or wrong. I hope it does. I hope it makes fucking a billion dollars. Uh, I feel like also a lot of people are gonna be seeing it again because my one friend Ronnie says he's gonna see it again. I want to see it again. The wife says she's gonna come along with me, so I was like, all right, cool, another ticket. It's fucking awesome. It's amazing. And um, 
if you're listening to this and you want to give a shit about spoilers and you just, you know, want to listen to my review and you didn't care about seeing Alien Romulus, go see Alien Romulus. It is fucking awesome. Um, for the time being, I'm going to give it an eight. It can move up to a nine later in life, but that's my thoughts right now. And I'm seeing a bunch of people on Twitter rank all the Alien films, including like variety and shit. So I'm going to rank them, including AVPs. So I think there's nine. So at number nine, I have Alien vs. Predator Requiem. That movie is so bad. It, I remember like watching in like college when I came out, I think, like a copy of it. And it was so dark, like dark as in like tone and dark in the cinematography. Like you can't see shit. It's so bad. It's such a terrible plot. That is one of the worst films I've ever seen. I think I gave it like a two out of 10 there. I mean, that's kind of a lie. I've seen a lot of terrible movies. Random fact. I just watched this. Sh- I should have said this earlier. Um, I watched the lost boys. Cause we have this like 80s scratch off poster. I think it was available at like um, five below or something like three years ago. Wife got it for me for like a Christmas gift. And so we, we have to watch the films together to scratch them off. It can't just be like, oh, I've seen Back to the Future scratch off. No, we have to watch Back to the Future together. It's like, all right, cool. So we got, you know, Star Wars scratched off and shit. So we have to go scratch off the Lost Boys, even though it's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Not like my favorite movies of all time, but the, my favorite vampire movie of all time, probably. So we watched that and it's just fucking kick ass. Like everything's practical for the most part. Um, it's, you know, it's 80s. It's, it's stylish. It's fashion. It's fucking awesome. It's funny as hell. Um, fucking amazing music. Say until the night. Lost boys, lost in the shadows. Michael, Michael, Michael. Uh, <laughs> but we were watching that one, and then we put on the Marvels, because she wanted to see it in a way. I kind of wanted to see it. They had a decent trailer. Uh, and that movie was just messy as hell. And that was on Disney+. Plus. And um, we, I said, can we stop this? Like, this fucking sucks. Can we watch, like, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? She didn't watch, want to watch it, so she was on her phone. I was watching Kingdom of the Planet Apes because I didn't get to see the show. There's a lot of films that I want to see at the movie theater. Oh, my buddy Drew's calling me. Drew, I'm going to have to call you back, dude. I'm almost done. Um, there's a lot of movies I want to see at the, the show, the movie theater, and uh, I just don't get to see them because I don't have the money. Kingdom of the Planet Apes was one of them. I want to see Oppenheimer too, but I have to, unfortunately, I have to probably watch Oppenheimer and Peacock or something. But uh, we put on Planet, the Kingdom of the Planet Amps, and it was great. It wasn't as good as the first three prequels, but absolutely unbelievable franchise. That is probably one of the greatest sci-fi uh, ideas ever. First film from 68 or whatever it was, absolute classic, absolute masterpiece, 10 out of 10 film. Uh, the sequels are kind of eh, and then the reboot sucked, and then the prequels were fucking amazing. So Kingdom of the Planet Amps was cool. But uh, anyway, kind of getting off track a little bit. But uh, movie-wise... I guess quickly jumping the gun as well. If you want me to continue doing this podcast, you think this is entertaining. If you think this is insightful, uh, I can continue to do that. Let me know. But uh, number eight, Alien Resurrection. I don't know how anything was worse than Alien Resurrection, but uh, Requiem definitely was. (laughs) So I have Alien Resurrection at eight. Fantastic movie until the ending completely just fucking derails it. Uh, Seven, Alien vs. Predator. Actually, pretty good movie. I remember seeing that when I was like a preteen teenager what was that 2004 with my buddy and uh it was it was good it was entertaining it wasn't great i think it was just like a pg-13 i think but um good movie it's enjoyable from time to time not not amazing but uh, number six so this is like a toss-up okay F- six to like maybe at least six and five so at six i put prometheus i know a lot of people put covenant behind prometheus but uh, Prometheus, fantastic. Actually, the scene with uh, the holograms going through Dave and they're running down the hall. I actually thought that was pretty scary. I thought that was pretty frightening. And I thought that was really great. But um, I just I just lacked Xenomorph, which I got in the next one. At number five, I put Alien Covenant. So I love the lore. I love David. He's this fucking psychopath. I loved uh, Walter. I just loved all of that shit. And I loved the Xenomorph at the end. That was wonderful. Uh, even Danny McBride in a fucking alien movie. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so Covenant's at five. Number four. So these might interchange. We'll see. At number four, I put Alien Romulus. Um, this movie, honestly, was at probably number one or two until the ending. Dead ass. So I'm hoping that the sequels, hopefully there are one or some, hoping that the sequels for Romulus include colonization and, and aliens and, and like big city or something with aliens. Um, or at least we can also get like an alien, like in a predator element, because in a way, I love the fact that 
the alien aesthetic is like the ships in the narrow hallways and it's dark and grungy and it's wet and all this shit fog or you know beams of light coming through the grates but i really want to see like uh, i thought the direction for covenant was going i believe i said this in my uh podcast for covenant i thought it was going to go in like a direction like a predator like the alien was out there in the woods and it's hunting the people i thought that was actually kind of cool but it never did that so maybe it also does that in another sequel before we get the city or something but number three i put aliens aliens is fucking fantastic i know aliens is probably number one on a lot of people's list but um i love aliens and it's tough to pick the top three for the alien franchise but number two alien if you already know this if you know who i am i love alien three at number one um why alien over aliens i really don't know i think i love the fact that in aliens you know it's funnier uh it's more action it's not as scary i love the fact of the colony and shit i love the elements i love the queen bishop all that stuff that's wonderful but i think i think the first film there's just something about the atmosphere it's just creepy as fuck and it's like literally one of the greatest horror films of all time so i remember as a kid just being so frightened i don't know if i said this on the podcast for covenant when i watched alien i was like 16 years old or something and uh the two scariest parts were dallas is in the like ceiling in like the tunnels the air vents the air shafts and then you know it's right about me blah, blah, blah. and then you know he turns around and then <laughs> and it cuts away fucking unbelievable perfect and then the other part was when i was like 16 i remember covering my eyes a little bit and i had my my hands <laughs> my hands in front of my eyes uh for she ripley has in the hallway and then you know the alarm is going off and the lights are like rotating around in a siren and the aliens there and it's uh, the the big uh, trombone or whatever flares up for the music and then she like hides or she, she has her back against the wall and she's like kind of crouching down and she leaves uh the kitty cat and then uh like the whole time i was just like oh is the fucking alien gonna go around the corner and get her like but you know the alien does it but like that was like one of the most frightening things in cinema it's fucking awesome but reason why i still have alien 3 as number one the assembly cut i would prefer the extended versions for all the movies mostly for also for like the terminator films and almost everything i I'm Catholic, I'm religious, uh, spiritual, whatever. And um, I love the assembly cut of that so much. And it speaks to me so much. You know, we're all, you know, screw ups and we're all trying to get right with God and whatnot. And, you know, you as a person listening to this, you know, you may not think you're any better than a prisoner, but, you know, we're all mess ups in a way and we all deserve grace and forgiveness. And that's what they were going for. And then they got it. They sacrificed their lives and uh, they defeated the alien and they screwed over the company. So uh, that speaks to me. And I absolutely love David Fincher's direction and the whole, uh, the art, the aesthetics. When I was like 16, 17, I didn't like it because it was all tight angle, low angle. And it was different than Alien or Aliens, a little more wider. So I adore Alien 3 still. And I love it so much. So Romulus almost beat that out almost beat it out but still an absolutely unbelievable film and i think slots one through six are interchangeable in a way they're all fantastic um like i said if ramos had like the alien wreck the, the city a little bit at the end might have been my all-time favorite without a doubt but uh as i said might have been <laughs> but i hope they do that once again in the future i hope they go in a direction where maybe like the, for the third film or something you have like xenomorphs and colonies or something then you have like a people like revolting um kind of like a star wars so like i know ripley he just did his letterbox top four and he always said uh star wars they can never do anything like that and then he took alien after he, did, he didn't want to do this one movie and uh i'm hoping that maybe ripley can make his own star wars you can have like the company versus uh like a rebellion so like you know uh the empire versus the rebels so maybe he, in a way he can like tribute one of his favorite movies. That is the reboot, the relaunch of the I Just Saw podcast. I just saw Alien Romulus and it was great. So I hope you enjoy the relaunch. Uh, if this goes well, maybe I do more. I love film. I'm just so, you know, tired, you know, when I come home from work that I don't have like necessarily energy to like do this. Today is my off day. That's why I have the energy to do it. So... Well, we'll see where this goes. 
And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you're listening on YouTube or tweet me or Instagram, DM me or whatever. If like, dude, that was great. I want to hear more of this, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot um, more uh, detailed, intricate, and also personable by doing this. You can listen in the car, wherever you are, for movie thoughts than if I just tweeted out like a 120 character tweet, quick thoughts on a film on Twitter. I refuse to call it X. <laughs> so, Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of miss doing this. It's a lot of fun. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go see Alien Romulus and Godspeed, everybody.